Well, <clears throat> it's almost 50 degrees out here today and, uh, well, it turned out to be a pretty nice morning. Good morning. Well, I've been working on this for a while. Working on the probe. Physically impossible for me, at least for me, to do this. And I knew I would not be able to do it anyways. Let me show you what I tried to do. And I think I made a mistake by doing it. You're not going to be able to see this with the Kodak ZE-1, but one of my viewers suggested cutting part of the handle down, which I did, but by the time I got my saw, little saw blade, I have one of these little uh, miniature hacksaws, the very thin blade, it cut too much down, and it's flush with the copper but that's not what bothers me. I needed to cut this down because physically impossible once these components are soldered to these terminals, which I'm not able to even do. Okay, you're not going to get that into the tube. You're just not going to get it in there. You've got a uh, 10K resistor and a little uh, 001, or if you want to call it a 1 nanofarad, 1,000 volt DC rated ceramic capacitor. These capacitors I got a couple of years ago from eBay and um, they're all rated at 1000 volts. So they're the smallest things that I have. And you can see that's very very tiny. I verified that these little capacitors will hold 715 volts from my Sprague Telemic T05 that puts out 715 volts. It's supposed to be 600, but you can crank it to all the way up to 715. And I held it on there. Capacitors held up just fine. So that's not the problem. The problem is uh, Jim was kind enough to draw me a uh, diagram of the switch and how it should be hooked up. And I think it's a very good idea. And that's all well and good, but it's way too, it's, it's microelectronics. I cannot work with that stuff. I thought I could under a microscope uh, eye lope, but there's no way. I, I got terminals that need to be cleaned out because this is a used switch, and I can't clean them out. Uh, there's no wire in there. There's just one in the center lug I can't clean out. Um, and it's just too small. I just cannot work on it. So I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to do this. Which, like I said before, I knew I wouldn't be able to anyway, so unless it's uh, on a very, very large scale. I thought a three-quarter inch pipe was too big. And believe it or not, I was going to use a half inch copper tubing. That would be physically impossible to put a switch in it. It is impossible to get this in. Now, I did manage to get this in there with the hemostats but with the hemostat when you grab the body of the switch you can't snap the hemostat together you got to hold them like a pair of pliers but I, got, I managed to get it in but like Jim had told me you just hold it in by holding the handle and then put the screws in well there is no longer a handle that sticks up on this a, a slide handle it's flush with this. So with the fingernail you could slide it. Okay, so I can deal with that. But I can't get this thing I can't get this thing wired up. Another thing too, I used rosin soldering flux. I put a little bit on a um, Q tip without the cotton. On the side of the switch, put it in the vise. Well actually I did it right here. It would not take solder. This would not 
take solder. I made sure my soldering iron was good and hot. It just rolled off. So you cannot solder to the side of the switch. So that part is let, that is out. You know, like Jim said here, solder to the switch body. So that would take care of all the grounding necessary to the shell because it would be screwed in. Well, that theory is out. We're going to have to scrap the idea of the probe unless one of you out there, and I'll, I'll pay for your troubles, if, but you let me know how much it would be. If anybody wants to tackle putting this thing together, I'll send the whole damn thing out to you and put it together. Actually becomes a point where it's not worth doing. You know? It really comes to a point where it's not worth doing. It's too much of a hassle for me. I think this would be a challenge for anybody, even with excellent eyesight. I will not make this in a plastic tube. It's got to be shielded. No two ways about it. And even if it was in a plastic tube, it would have to be at least an inch and a quarter inside diameter. In other words, double. No, well, almost double the inside diameter of this. Now, the other option that I was going to do is I was going to just put six little... Well, I wouldn't need six according to this. If you're looking at the switch, the two center ones, the top center is going to be fed with a 001 from the probe tip or the probe socket in this case, because that's what I've got. And then the probe tip sticks in that. 001 to the uh, center. The bottom center goes with a flexible wire to the BNC, which is at the other end of the probe. The right-hand side two contacts are jumped out. So that alone I think I can do, okay? But wiring the two diodes, the 1N34 here and the 1N34 over there, in there is impossible for me to do and then you got the 10k and the 001 over here which is here you can see how big that is compared to the switch see how far down that sticks out but I can't I can't work with these these holes are very tiny in here and at the very most, you're going to be able to get one of these leads in one hole. That's it. There is no room to wrap it around. It'll short out to the next terminal. This is, this is microelectronics, as far as I'm concerned. So, I'm afraid it's a failure. But that's nothing new with me. Nothing new with me. I, I'm not going to fart around with this. I, I appreciate Jim for all he's done. You know, but I just can't work with this stuff. I thought I could. And the bigger switches I would have a struggle with, the ones I showed you in the very beginning when I was showing you this probe. But... You can't use those there. This thing here, with the components, I'd probably not be able to get it in there. I tried putting the switch in, holding it in with my finger, and the two screw holes line up perfectly. So this is this part is good. It's about the only thing I did good on this thing. But I had to cut the switch down because you're not going to slide it into the tube with the components on it. And having them come out on the sides instead of straight down, well, that sounds 
sounds better in theory than in practice. It just can't be done. It just cannot solder to these tiny, tiny terminals. This is under the category of transistor work. It's too small. So, I think we're going to end this. I think we're going to forget about the probe. But I do have a request if anybody wants to tackle this uh, in the 48 states only. I will ship this thing out to you, but I got to know how much you're going to charge me. I don't want no freebies. I had a scumbag troll criticize me, and I delete him. It's the same one. It's the same punk. I'll ask somebody if they want to do it. I don't want a freebie. I will ship it to you. I'll ship this. The two ends. Now, this black one, it's the same as this had a wire already on it but I'm going to that's going to have to be removed and I think it's a 3 8 deep well socket that you use to tighten the nut down that's a 3 8 inch uh, and it's got a star washer under it so that bites into the metal so I would probably take that one out put this one in and I've got another one of these caps and you solder it on the end of that so that that goes there like that. Now, if anybody does want to do this, I will send this diagram out along with the original PDF drawing that Jim, Jim Asbell made. This down here is the same one I just showed you, only it's a smaller on smaller scale. This is the modified circuit. So... Um, that's the only thing I can say. Um, like I say, I don't want a freebie. I never ask for freebies. But I'm willing to pay for this. But you got to let me know what you're going to charge. In here, I have the other cap. So I would probably send all this small stuff. And also, I got another switch. Jim sent me two switches. So I got another switch that I did not hack off the handle, so it would slide in, in here. So you can do what you have to do. Um, Jim had suggested, these were used switches that were sitting around for quite a while. He recommended me cleaning them, and that's what I did. On this one, I cleaned it with deoxid. The one that's in here I did not yet, so you may want to do that. But that's it. Um, it's not going to be my creation or Jim's idea uh, only, because if somebody puts this together for me, well, it'll be like a kit, I guess. I know a lot of you guys got... We, my dad used to say too many irons in the fire, and Doug is one of them, and I wouldn't ask Doug... He's probably very capable of putting this all together because he loves working with microcircuitry. Uh, but you got too many irons in the fire and, you know, you haven't even got on the radio that I sent you yet. So uh, I'm not going to ask you, Doug, to, to do this. But I'm kind of like putting this out there for any of my regular viewers who are willing to do this and I'll send it to them. So that's all there is to that. I uh, sorry to have to make a video of another failure, but I should learn my damn lesson. Buy things that are ready made. Do not try to build stuff that requires micro -cir circuitry. I keep saying surgery. <laughs> nope, that is the problem I've always had. Even when I had good eyesight, I just cannot work with this small stuff. There's no way I'd get the components, even if I had excellent eyesight. All these on this switch. And now that you can't solder to the uh, body of the switch, that means i got to bring out a ground wire from the assembly and solder it on the inside of this tube. 
which would probably be down here, and slide the cap on over it. As long as you're not soldering on the outside of the tube, you're not going to interfere with the end cap going on. So you can make your ground connection on the inside to ground the two diodes, the 10K resistor, and everything to the copper probe body. All right, that's it, folks. That ends the probe so-called construction. This project is a failure.